Hello and welcome to Panel on Panels, the podcast about all things comics and comics related. I'm your host, John Campbell. Say next to me, Mike Gorgoni. I am indeed Mike Gorgoni. And next to him is Mr. Donovan Eilert. Guten Tag. How is everybody? Goose Great. Dog. Good response. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm glad yeah. we left no, a little space for people. Well, <laughs> I want to know how they're feeling. Yeah, good. Just write in our comment section. I'm sorry. The Let German me know. threw me. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. He spoke really? Spanish on the first episode, so... Wait, are you just going to move through all of the languages? I've got about three more to go, and okay. then I'm tapped out. <laughs> so we've got to get real creative after that. <laughs> Klingon is next, everybody. Excellent. <laughs> Look forward to Klingon on the next episode. All right, so today's topic is uh, a surprisingly controversial one, I'm going to go ahead and say. I mean, not controversial. That might not be the right word, but a uh, people have a lot of strong opinions about today's topic. When, yes. it, when it seems like a fairly open and shut topic from uh, maybe to the outside you, of things to you well, i'm saying from the outside of things of people who maybe don't read comics but know comics characters this one's kind of a or big one a comic character let's say that if you know a comic book character it's probably the one that we're talking about today can we just say it already i've been burying the lead here <laughs> a little <laughs> bit we are talking about superman yes yes superman the man of steel the Boy last son blue. of krypton the big blue boy scout yep captain You're- underpants no, it's slightly different. Also, great comic. <laughs> oh, okay. And, yeah, no, a, a different fantastic I'm sorry, character. I'm sorry, I get confused. For, maybe, yeah. Wait, maybe we it, weren't supposed to read all of those books? No. In preparation for no. this? Don't worry, it only wasted about six minutes of my life <laughs> on all 18 issues. <laughs> well, that's great. A, we'll have to do another episode about Captain, Captain Underpants. Captain Underpants? Underpants? I'll yeah. be there. <laughs> all right. Good. I'm glad because there's a chance you might come in for some of these and not other ones. Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't. I didn't Depends remember. on the topic. All right. Like things not You've Captain Underpants so adjacent. <laughs> Donovan's out. You've lucked out. <laughs> Origin story: Superman, kind of like Captain Underpants. <laughs> Catwoman? Eh, I don't think I'm going to. Yeah. Le- le- <clears throat> I'm sick. I'm sorry. <laughs> Less like Captain Underpants. Catwoman. <laughs> I think about as far away from it as it gets. Um, <laughs> we should. <laughs> I'm going to go with Watchmen, but yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know. There's a couple scenes. Surprising kind of. parallels between Watchmen <laughs> yeah. and Captain I, Underpants. Did they rearrange letters on a signboard at one point in Watchmen? <laughs> I feel like that was... Alan Moore is trying to tell us something about yeah. Captain Underpants. Yeah, and you flip back and forth between the pages. <laughs> That's my see. new nickname for Alan Moore is Captain Underpants. Oh, he would love that. <laughs> he would love it. Good thing he doesn't listen to technology. Yeah. So. <laughs> Thank God. He's stuck in his hobbit hole in uh, the north of England. We've... Okay, we've done two episodes so far, and then we've succeeded in insulting Alan Moore twice. <laughs> hey, he was so, on my list of authors. No, know? it's true. I have but a deep we, love for his I quirkiness. I don't want a running gag to be, let's insult Alan Moore. Oh, too late. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, speaking of Alan Moore, he did write a Superman comic. This is in true. In the 1980s, yeah. Whatever Happened to the Man of Tomorrow, it's called. Mm. Um, have you guys read that? I have not. I haven't read that. Oh, great. Have you read, I read John? Well, I have read Cape it. Crusader, then, but I haven't please. read it. I have read it. It's a, it's a really Educate. interesting. It's a really interesting co- uh, comic. It's uh, Alan Moore's attempt to tell the last Superman story. How'd that go? Um, it's okay. I mean, <laughs> it's, I mean, I'm just saying. Oh, his, were there more Superman comics? I'm not sure. I I think there have been more <laughs> Superman comics since this was published in like the early 80s. But he did write for Doctor Who, which means he could have access to a TARDIS, which means that could be the right. last of... All Doctor Who writers have access to the TARDIS? I think that's one of the perks. Why else would he write Doctor Who for a while? A little no, use no, of the TARDIS? Right. Okay, yeah, it no, checks out. Yeah. 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 Anyone who writes so Doctor Who So we could. That could be the last issue, just written... True. <laughs> 50 true. million years from now. No, so the, No, the, the story has to do with Superman fakes his death and then just uh, assumes the identity of a normal person. I don't even think just, it's not even Clark Kent. For reasons. Like uh, Elvis. And then, right? he's, and then he's with Lois. There's so it's like Bubba Hotep with Superman? Yeah. 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 The whole thing awesome. is framed with this reporter interviewing all these people about whatever happened to Superman. You know, mm. And, and Lo- he's talking to Lois Lane. And Lois Lane has this husband who's around. And at the end, you realize it's Superman, and he like winks ah. at the audience. And, oh, oh no, I'm all right, folks. I, I told just you this was going to be a crazy up. day. It's exactly, it's exactly <laughs> that. It's exactly that moment. It's a fourth wall breaking. Uh-huh. Told you this was going to be a crazy day, uh-huh. kind of moment. Anyway, that's just to to like stop insulting Alan Moore. <laughs> that's a fairly decent Superman comic. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I will have to check it out. Yeah, it's 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 worth checking out. It's a it's definitely a fascinating oddity because it's Alan Moore and because it was an attempt to end the story of Superman. Who gave him permission to do that? Or is that Alan Moore saying, I, I will end this? When does he get permission from people? Is that, <laughs> has that been a thing? No, he, was, no. he was working, at, he was working at DC point. at this point. I think, I don't know, I don't know for sure on this. So if, if somebody looks this up on Wikipedia, please don't write in. Um, so or I, do. I, yeah, sure. I guess why not? Um, 
But uh, I think it was right around the time that John Byrne was writing Man of Steel, and oh. he was going to relaunch the character in a new continuity. Mm. So I think DC this was, in their continuity. I think I think this was uh, they. He had the freedom to end that continuity of Superman um, hmm. before another one began. Right, because interesting because in the in the it was in that mid eighties when John yeah. Byrne uh, wrote Man of Steel and, and relaunched the whole character. Um, with a whole new continuity following uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths. We mm-hmm. wow! I I realize there's like a multiverse Superman comic out right now, something like that. Um, yeah, there's there's several. I mean, there's, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, the, is, Grant, Grant Morrison just did one. Right? Is mm-hmm. Alan Moore's like pedestrian Superman somewhere in there? I really want him. Not to be. not in anything I've read. No, <sighs> not so far. But if you're listening, I just want the one Superman to show up and be like. Guys, I'm reading the paper. Can you keep it quiet? There right. is a, there is a Barack Obama Superman in it. Though. Oh, of course, yeah. Why would there be? Yeah, um, that's some crazy that'll be stuff relevant too. forever. If you want <laughs> if you want to read some really trippy, um, weird Superman stuff, uh, check out the Grant Morrison uh, New Fifty Two. A Grant Morrison comic that's weird and trippy, John. You're shocking me with your well, words. It's interesting though. We're gonna make fun of all five on my list from last time. <laughs> I'm not making fun of Grant Morrison. Wait, who I else like did it. he have? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I don't either. Um, I'm not telling. <laughs> not now. You have to listen to the Jeff episode Johnson. that goes on there. Do you have right. anything bad to say about Jeff Johns? No. Well, the way he spells Jeff is just. Oh, <laughs> I know. The worst. I know. Same gonna... with Jeff Loeb, who was also on my list. So. Yeah, there you go. Both just Jeffs. The, double Jeff. Oh, you actually did take a crack at Loeb on the last one. Well, yeah. that's because of him the and Hulk my Hulk run. issues. Yeah. Anyway. And you wonder why I wouldn't be around for every recording of this podcast. <laughs> I see where I stand here. Um, so, yeah. I'm it was your here. mistake. You threw those out there uh, <laughs> for us to attack like rabbit dogs. <laughs> dogs uh no but superman if there's anything i try to emulate john it's a rabbit dog <laughs> a rabbit dog yes a yes. rabbit dog yeah. oh cool it's a, hybrid, leaps. it's a hybrid animal is that yeah. the follow-up to cat dog yeah cool yeah it's, it's <laughs> finally the sequel series to so cat. i know superman <laughs> superman <laughs> who's not a rabbit dog no no i don't think so I don't Though, know. I haven't read all of that. That Morrison is run. <laughs> that is a weird segue into one of my many issues with Superman. All right. Let, I mean, yeah. There's no real format here, but okay. Yeah. Sure. Let's start with your issues of su- all of the su- super animals. All right. So all of can them? I go down the list, y'all? Well, I mean, okay, sure. So we've got Crypto the Super Dog. Yes. Great. I love him. Uh, we've got okay. I don't know the names of all of these animals, but right. there is there is a super horse. Okay. Yeah. There- I believe there's a super cat. I probably. I mean, look, if you can hold Silver Age stuff against this, we can get into some weird Batman (laughs) stuff, too. Any of the characters had weird moments in the Silver Age. I mean, it makes sense that Krypton was just like us. But let's let's stick with the big one. That's Crypto the Super Dog. Because he's definitely still around. He is definitely still around. Yeah. And kind of so is Ace the Bat Hound, but... <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Okay. Batman's got a dog too. Sure, but Batman has a dog, and it's just like, but Batman's a normal dude. Batman has a normal thought, dog. Right. Superman is Ace not a normal Ace dude. Ace doesn't wear the cowl anymore. Right. I thought Batman's dog was Damien. Was that not? Oh. Did I, is that not? No. Oh, you can't. Oh, that. <laughs> Everybody was thinking that. I wasn't. He is a very tortured child. Comparing yes. him to an animal is kind of disrespectful <laughs> to, I think, the guys who created Damien Wayne. Grant and, Morrison. Created yeah. Damian Wayne. Well, he's not perfect. <laughs> <laughs> That's a discussion for a different day. So, Crypto, crypto has he done Superdome. anything? Like, is there any memorable kind of Crypto just, arcs? He's kind of just around he's now. Happened. He's like a like. What was the impetus of creating a superpowered dog? To like, oh, Superman's not cool enough. He needs a canine buddy to fly around so with him. So just like us. He was his childhood pet on Krypton, I believe, is the original. He was a baby when he, he left Krypton. How can you have yeah. a childhood <laughs> pet pre- on Krypton? That's pretty thin. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I was told I had goldfish when I was like six months old. That doesn't mean <laughs> I bonded with them and that they have superpowers. They traveled all the way around the universe to get back to him. <sighs> also, how many things can escape Krypton? Apparently, a lot. A lot. Everything. <laughs> A ton of things. Ton. Only one survived. Oh, slash eighteen thousand. Like over the years, the a whole destruction city. of Krypton has become less and less impactful. It's I feel true. Like. It's like you've got Kandor, the Bottle City. Yeah. Um, you've got Supergirl. I mean, Superboy, depending on the interpretation. Right. Sometimes he's a clone. Sometimes he's a yeah. clone yeah. now. In the current continuity, he's yeah. a clone. Um, um, which I prefer Zod. that that Zod got out. Well, Zod and well, the whole Phantom Zone. You could open yeah. up anything that's in the Phantom Zone, right? Because that's around. That makes the most well, no, sense. No, technically the Phantom Zone is not around by definition. That's true. But do you but, think those things were brought in because at some point nothing earthly could really bring Superman down? So no, I definitely think – I mean I think, I think Zod and the Phantom Zone stuff makes the most sense because the Phantom Zone is a thing outside of Krypton. Sure. 
there are Kryptonian things in it, but you know you can open it up via a Phantom Zone projector or a pane of glass. Why not? Yeah, um, easy. Yeah, exactly. Everybody also, does the biggest thing to escape Krypton besides Superman, Brainiac. Uh, depending, depending on their depends writing. on your I was say the writing, but definitely, the, I always like that in the animated series that take on Brainiac. Because see, the, that's the interesting thing I think that's going to emerge in this conversation is my Superman is definitely the animated series Superman. Okay, see, this is yeah, this was the conversation I, I was. This is this is kind of where I, I wanted to start a little bit, which is we, um, what? Yeah, what is your Superman? You said the animated series. What's the animated the thing, series. Yeah. When you think of Superman, what's the image that comes to mind? And that's definitely like the. DC animated stuff from the mm-hmm. like late '90s, early 2000s. Mm-hmm. Uh, right, the Superman, the, Superman the animated Justice series, League. Justice League, Justice League Unlimited, mm-hmm. um, all of that stuff. That's my the canon of Superman in my brain. Because mm-hmm. like I've read some Superman comics, but not as much as you, clearly. Right. Um, so when I think Superman, I think like, whoa, well, Pa Kent's still alive. Right, and, and I'm like, no, he's on the long farm. dead. Um, <laughs> and like, Crypto the Superdog is like a weird oddity that shows up in some of the animated movies, but not necessarily in the show. Yeah, um, I, don't, I don't think he did show up in the show, did he? No. Um, Supergirl showed up in the show, right? Yeah, 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 she did. Yeah. Um, cause and Mixelplick did, too. Oh, I love me some Mixelplick. I actually really like the Mixelplick episode of the show. I thought... I thought <laughs> Gilbert a, Godfrey is mil- Mixelplick. Number one, that's a perfect Only voice choice. Sense. <laughs> and that's a Paul Dini episode who's always fantastic. And I think yeah. he, like, in one episode, did everything you could ever want to do with Mixelplick. <laughs> and just that's the end of it. Was there more you could have done? Well, no, I mean, but he does the thing where Mixelplick keeps coming back. And yeah, it's over yeah, a yeah. Long, yeah, I mean, I'm saying, like... I don't know. I mean, Grant Morrison uses mix up in an interesting way. In, and I in support him for it. New 52. Um, <laughs> so anyway, yeah, so you're, you're, you would say yours is the animated series. That's your, like, prime Superman, I guess is the term I'm going to use. Yeah, because everything else I have with Superman, comic-wise, is usually in the frame of Justice League or mm. Batman Superman. Right. So See, and that's where I started. I started with anything in Justice League where he's, he's a leader but also a supporting character because you really just want to pay attention to Batman. Right. And then... Um, the old the Dean Cain show was also where I started, hmm. um, just because that's what that's what my uh, my parents were watching. Was the was that Clark Lois and Clark? Lois and Clark, yeah, Avengers of Superman. <laughs> Wait, yeah, they were never it. in a canoe. I was very disappointed. <laughs> Lois and Clark. I know they they really they missed that one there. But Ooh, those a history joke. <laughs> but but those those were the the weird like hey, hybrid Westwood expansion of what I had was was Lois and Clark, and then him in supporting roles, and then. Only when I was older did I find, like, legit Superman stories by himself. I would say my definitive Superman, or, like, what comes to mind is Christopher Reeve. Mm, Uh, The the 1979 movie and and the, uh, I can't remember what year uh, uh, two came out, but those two movies. um, Not three and four, John? Come on, John. Not not so much three and four. Not so much three and four, no. I mean, he's still fine in them, but (laughs) the movies around him got increasingly worse. We were one away from Giant Mechanical Spider. Oh, oh boy. man. Yeah. yeah, we can talk a little bit about that <laughs> later. The Nicolas Cage Superman that almost was. Oh. And and I really wish that existed. I really do. <laughs> Um, but no, so that, that's what, that's what immediately comes to mind for me is, is Christopher Reeve. I mean, he was, I, I think really he was a perfect embodiment of the character too. I mean, his, the, from his look, his attitude, everything about that kind of set the tone I like Superman me some Brandon Routh. I was going to say Brandon Routh, but he's kind of a Rivian. Yeah, sort I was going to say Brandon. Brandon Routh's performance is very, in, in, a, in a positive way, derivative of yeah, uh, of yeah. Reeves' performance. I feel like, I mean, that movie in particular was meant to sort of be the the finishing chapter of the Donner trilogy. <laughs> Considering they kept the whole amnesia kiss thing, and yeah, yeah, they kept all that. The music's the same. The aesthetic is it's a more modern world, but it's it it, it feels of a whole with the the first two Donner movies, I think, um, and I really think he did capture that same the same feeling that I got from Christopher Reeve as Superman. And Kevin Spacey is definitely one of my favorite Lex Luthor. He's probably oh, my I favorite that Lex was Luthor. Miserable. Oh, here we go. Yeah, well, I, the only thing about that movie I liked was the soundtrack and Ralph. That was the only really? thing. Really, I'll oh, give yeah. you that. Kate Bosworth was a weak. She Lois was Lane. terrible, and and the supporting characters for for Lex Luthor are pretty miserable as well. But sure, but you're I mean, not on board with he Spacey. He always has random goons and no. ditzy girlfriends. No, really? I didn't. I mean, I like Spacey. He's fine, but I just didn't like his interpretation. I felt. I don't see, know. It's thought, too dramatic. I, I felt thought like. I thought he walked the perfect line between being menacing and still having a sense of humor. Like no, that see, line. I in wanted there is like, say it. Mm-hmm. You're insane. No, 
say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Superman, no, nah, wrong, or yeah, whatever. Yeah, he I, says. Think, yeah, like, I think he says wrong. That's yeah, so perfect. It's See, just like oh, or is that monologue about it. gods or silly creatures who run around in red capes and don't mm-hmm. share their powers with the world? He was like, br- try to bring in a little bit of that that humor and that whimsy, and I didn't care for it. And that interpretation. Because the rest of the movie was trying to be completely so you, so serious. So you, you prefer like a Gene Hackman performance? Yeah. Because Hackman to me is maybe a little more, more too so. goofy. More so. There's some stuff I really like of Gene Hackman. Like like Lex Luthor in Superman 2 is awesome. When when he, he, he betrays Superman, then he's with Superman, then he's, just, he's with the, yeah. the fugitives, or he's with Superman depending on... Like I thought that was a great user. He's not even the main villain in that movie. He's just like a sniveling weasel. <laughs> well, and Superman's whole plan to defeat Zod at the end of the movie requires Lex Luthor to betray him. He like knows that going in <laughs> yeah. and knew he was going to do it's it. It's awesome. Yeah, it's. I mean, that stuff is that stuff is great. Well, I, it also I, speaks I, of like a knowledge between Superman and Lex Luthor that I think is indicative of that those characters' relationship. Yes, which I love because Superman more so than I mean, Batman is the Joker and stuff, but Superman really has like a central antagonist who's always around constantly, mm-hmm. and so they, they yeah they have this relationship that's. The, that's just decades and decades of history between them, what? and they know each other so well at this point, and their their characters are so set that I, I yeah I really think that relationship is a key component of Superman, well, which is why All Star Superman mm-hmm. Grant Morrison is wonderful. I mean, oh, it's there's the, the arc with with Lex Luthor and Superman and him rescuing him from prison, but without showing him who he mm-hmm. is. I mean, that was just at perfect. The, that I was mean, like the most. Spoiler alert for All Star Superman here. But oh, sorry about that. No, 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 not 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 your part. What I'm about to say at the end when he has Superman's powers and he's able to see the world as Superman sees it on a microscopic level and he can see all the atoms in the air and he finally gets why Superman is the way he is. Yeah, and he feels bad that he's killed him at the end of that comic as yeah. well. I mean, he uh, he set into motion this long plan to kill Superman, and then now he's going to devote his life to building a new Superman. It's like, yeah, that was. As a, I mean, I know it's a single arc, it's a one-off, but that was just like... Oh, that that to me is one of the best Superman stories. Ever. And, then that, and I was like, kinda... what? This isn't like Lois and Clark at all. <laughs> <laughs> so that's when I was like really far, starting to step into like, oh, maybe he's Wait, Sacagawea legit... going to get here. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You're not going to let up on that. It's a good... They uh, had to name their show Lois and Clark, so yep. I don't know what to tell you, John. The jokes are all there. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, I've, I've rewatched some episodes of that show. That show suffers from being made in the 90s. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's true. It's true. That's one of the biggest complaints I have with it was timing. Just like the uh, Duncan Rieger. Um, Zorro. Zorro. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, he was a great Zorro. It's also in the 90s. Yeah. It, However, it, Batman it, was in that show. What? <laughs> Adam West was in an episode Adam of... West. As Batman? No, no. Oh. Well, he has a hot air balloon and he flies away in it. So, maybe. Because <laughs> so we maybe. all know a key component of Batman is his hot air balloon. Just flight. In general, light in general, his ingenuity. Yeah, yeah Batman. You know, he had like gadgets. He was like a sure, traveling sure, guy with gadgets. Yeah. Uh huh. James, James Bond is also in that show. Yes, there's an episode with Daniel Craig. Yes, a very very young Daniel Craig. Wait, which we're talking about the, a '90s Zorro show? How am I not aware of? Oh, this? it's Duncan perfect. Regeer. It's great. It's, it's great. perfect. And it has, um, it, you the just main... got done saying it was made in the '90s. It's not perfect. <laughs> well, it was perfect if you. You watch it like you watch the first season of Buffy. Okay, you know, enough. yeah. You're like, okay, it's dated from this, but like acting and everything. The Mendoza's intent, great. The intent was there, but some of the technical limitations of the time. Also, okay. but the, it's still a good show. The really crossover show. I'm waiting for is the love interest, and that is also a quasi love interest in the Three Amigos, set both in Mexico, and could very easily be a crossover. <laughs> I'm just Zorro saying. plus three amigos. I mean, it was good time at what, the cinema. What Ooh. else do I need? Okay, assuming you can get everyone back for a three amigos sequel of some kind. Okay, who do you get to play Zorro in that movie? You Anto- get Antonio Banderas. Okay, really? Yeah. You think Duncan <laughs> Rigger could do it? I think he's a little old. <laughs> he was now. in Fright Night. Was yeah. You, what? No, no, he was in. Uh, oh no, he uh, was Monster in Monster Squad. Uh, that's right. Sorry, Monster Squad, not yeah. Fright Night. That was before Zorro. Was that really? Yeah. He was a boxer before that too. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. We're this still guy. not talking about Superman. Duncan <laughs> Regeer never played He's Superman. Kind of and now like this Superman. brings me to my second problem with Superman. There are always more interesting things than Superman. <laughs> All right, this is the- boom. Mic drop. Walk away. <laughs> All right, th- this this brings me to kind of the the impetus for wanting to do this episode was I really like Superman. And I feel like he is a really maligned character by modern comic fans. Because he's boring. Well, mm. see, this is if the... not written correctly, there are some good Superman okay, stories. Okay, see, this is what I was going to say. So he's, he's, a, he's a maligned character, yet 
he has this history as being the first superhero, at least in the modern way that we think of them. Which I meant to do some research before we did this podcast, mm-hmm. so I, I really wanted to nail down exactly, like, what was the first time they used the term superhero? Yeah, I don't know the answer to that, but, I mean, it, it definitely stems from Superman. This is my thought. Somebody at another company saw this, saw the sales, and said, get me one of those superheroes. Well, I mean, the... Yeah. I mean, I, that's what I think. I think it was just sort of used as a catch-all eventually when it was like characters like Superman, sure. other heroes who had superpowers, mm-hmm. much like Superman, are superheroes. But I just feel like those two words, super and hero, could have been applied to like Hercules or. But they Gilgamesh. weren't. That's the thing. That's the thing. They could be applied for sure. Yeah. But well, it you- stems from him, regardless of whether or not they would have come together eventually, or whether or not you could apply them. It still stems from Superman. He created modern superhero comics or not even modern just superhero when comics. was the first superman published uh that would have been th- uh what was it 30 38 or 39 yeah i think 38 38 because um because batman i think was the next year yeah um, and when does marvel start up on their shtick that well that would have been if you start with like captain america that would have been the 40s because world war ii's going on so like 40 right. Three. Huh. Well, no, it's great. It's be- before World War, it's becoming clear we're not historians on this. Yeah. No shit, John. <laughs> World War before World War Two, Superman was like shutting down corrupt bankers and yeah, that it's an interesting minor mob bosses and standing he up was, for women on the. Street. He was a real hero of the people kind of guy. He was, uh, I mean, like in his first story, he's uh, uh, carrying the real murderer of something to the governor's office so that somebody won't be unfairly executed. Hmm. And he's just like leaping over, but he can't fly either. No, yeah, no, he's I mean, just leaping, um, which is also leaps tall buildings in single ground, ground yeah. faster than a speeding bullet. Right, right, right. So that's and that's the other interesting thing to look at is the evolution of his power. Hold the continuity worth a damn. <laughs> well, no one, no one at DC superpower. can. No one at DC can. <laughs> Batman, <laughs> roughly, Batman. Clo- he's much closer to to having a continuity. True. And if, and if you take, also, if you take into account Morrison stuff, he also did the same thing with Superman, where he just takes into account. All of their continuity is if it's history. Yeah. There's a lot more money, I feel like, thrown at Batman as well. Like, these people days, know that Batman is the moneymaker. This is the other thing that, that I find interesting. If you look at it historically, Superman was the more popular character for decades. Batman, sure. they, Batman was always the second character. And then Not anymore. somewhere along the line, and I don't know exactly where this shift it's when happened. America developed sarcasm. I mean, I think there's sometime in the eighties. I think there's some truth to that. That there was he was a harsh. I think it was more with seventies, really. Like when he became that that like Death Wish era, mm. gritty streets in like New York. Cynicism started becoming a. I don't want to say a popular trend, but certainly more evident in popular culture. People were looking for darker characters. People right. were looking for more brooding characters. That was around the time the Punishers created and stuff. These darker characters. And that was Denny O'Neill and Neil Adams era of um, Batman, hmm. where he was definitely a more street-level hero, a detective, fi- fighting, you know, real wor- more real-world crime. crime. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, t- he's beating up rapists. He's, you know, punching out muggers. He's dealing with mob bosses specifically. Um, the Joker becomes more of a homicidal maniac than a wacky prankster. Crazy Quilt has been sent to the roadside. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The, so I think that was around the time back. that we saw the shift. Uh, who? When was Crazy Quilt just came back? One of uh, Kevin Smith's Batman's. Really? It was in. Was it that. Widening Gyre? Yeah, it's Widening Gyre. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. Crazy Quilt shows up. Wow. Well, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> he made. He did some interesting stuff with Crazy Quilt. But uh, <laughs> as sure. as much can be said about Crazy Quilt. Yeah. Um, no, so I think there was this shift away from Superman is a much more aspirational character. Oh, He's the but it, yeah. best of us. Sure, but Captain America in like envelops all of those same traits without any of like the superpowers. But here's what happens is Superman was somebody from another another earth, right. another planet, right? Oh, he's cool. He's this hero for the people. Captain America, Batman, both theoretically possible through science. Sure. So well, now we re- tr- switch to like, well, I could be. So, something that, Something I heard, well, I, I don't know who, who to attribute this quote to, but I heard this great quote about um, Superman is a fantasy. Batman is an option. <laughs> yeah. No, that's – and same with Captain America th- well, Rain. less so, I, though, no, because I that understand. requires scientists to invent something. Batman, sure, sure, all sure. you have to do is train and put on that mask. Sure. But 
if you're born on Earth, if right. you were born on Earth, you have no chance of being Superman, basically. Right, exactly. But I think that was also a big reason why Superman Need was so... Need to get you one of them red suns, boy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> why, why Superman was so popular when he first came out in the, in the 1930s, he was, he was an immigrant story. Sure. Yeah. He was. He was the. He was the American dream. I well, mean, he, here he here he is. This guy from another place comes here and becomes our savior. It was also. I mean, certainly we can talk about the Jesus allegories with him as well. And Moses. Yeah. I mean, oh, both, yeah. Both I mean, of those kinds of. Mm-hmm. Well, and you look at who is writing comics. No, no, no. Captain America was Moses because he parted the Red Skull. Oh, that's right. That's right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mike Argoni. I'm shaking my head. You can't. <laughs> You can't pick that up on the audio, but <laughs> just shaking your head. I don't know if it's in disbelief or shame or uh, it's, anger. Kind, it's kind of a mixture of all of them, all really. Right. Um, but you also have to look at like in the late 30s, mm-hmm. most of the comic writing business in New York is Jewish people. Oh, Siegel and Schuster, absolutely. They were they were um, nerdy Jewish kids who are who are people who haven't found their quote unquote Messiah yet. So. You have somebody step in who could be a messiah for these, you know. For, yeah, I mean, they were, they it, were. There's a lot of, there's. I mean, I mean, I, they were weak young men who wanted to, you know, fight bullies and stuff like mm-hmm. that and get girls. And I mean, if you read a lot of the early Superman comics in particular, too, there's a big thing about putting one over on Lois. Like, like she hmm. always talks about Clark Kent as this nerd, and then and then there's all these like thought bubbles of stuff like <laughs> she's a dumb dumb doesn't know that uh, that I'm really broad doesn't Superman. know a dang thing about Superman. Yeah, they're pretty. They're pretty like all oh, comics. They're pretty sexist. Sure. Like very misogynistic <laughs> comics. Um, but it's kind of an interesting thing. There was the it was like it was a nerd revenge story in many ways written by these two guys who were bullied and girls didn't pay attention to them. And so they created this character who was the strongest, coolest guy in the world. Sure, but th- look at it another way. Superman, what does he think is going to be the most unassuming, like, nondescript? And that's, like, the lowly nerd. Like, Superman's opinion You're of... bringing this to the Tarantino Kill Bill model. Right? A little bit. Yeah. Um, well, no, his point is that Superman is the person, Clark Kent is the mask in Kill Bill. But he's also saying that it's... Uh, that, that the character of Clark Kent that he creates is mocking the human race. Right, exactly. And, like, I don't know if that much thought was necessarily put into I don't, it. I don't, it was I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that he's mocking the human race so much as he wants to create a nondescript personality. Somebody sure, but that you people can go nondescript to. without going, like, can't pick up my desk to get my pencil. Well, and there are varying degrees, once again, like anything, of how nerdy Clark Kent is. Sure. Because, I mean, you, you look at him and other stuff, he's a little klutzy. Like, the way Christopher Reeve plays him, he's kind of bumbling. But he's, like, a lovable, nice guy. But that is my one issue with the uh, Superman animated series is Clark Kent looks like a he's, linebacker. He's yeah. gigantic. He's like 6'6 six, six and, and <laughs> right. you know, 280 pounds. Uh-huh. He's a giant Twice of a man. Twice as wide as anyone in the room. <laughs> his, head, believable. his head alone is bigger than Lois's body. Like, oh, yeah. No. It's, yeah. it's believable. I mean, a lot of that has to do with just the Bruce Timm art style. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. uh, Batman's the same way. Batman's gigantic. <laughs> I mean, Batman's almost bigger than Superman. Yeah, hey, uh, Bruce, you put on a lot of muscle over the last couple of years. And I mean... We've seen this rise in vigilanteism. There's no, no. There's there's some there's some episode where he's working out with some guy, and I'm just like, oh, that guy's never going to be able to keep up with Bruce Wayne. Look at him. <laughs> he's like three of this guy. <laughs> he's, but yeah, that that is an interesting thing. Where Superman in that is huge. There's yeah. no way that they wouldn't pick up on that. He's Superman. but a lot of modern inter- interpretations of Superman have him being. I mean, he kind of has. He's the Superman. Well, look at um, uh, Cavill in Man of Steel. Yeah. He's probably the most buff Superman we've seen. I mean, and there's always the discussion of, like, how do people not know he's Superman? I mean, it's 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 something you have to buy into. But there's but there's things that he's done throughout the year, getting people to impersonate him, like shapeshifters, changing the color of Robots. his eyes. Molec- yeah, like, there's things. Yeah. He wears big ear clothing to make it look like he's, he slouches. Yeah. He, like, I mean, he keeps his head down He can change his voice because he can shift his... Right, vocal cords. Yeah, that's Kryptonian. You know, normal. I've, I've, I've always just of my problems with consider. Superman. I'm just saying it's not as How black and white. How many powers does he have? Well, now this is this is brings it up uh, the inconsistencies going from writer to writer because sometimes he's able to blow out a sun with his breath. Right. Um, mm-hmm. Other times he's somewhat powered, but you know, I mean, I th- no, he's always going to be the top of the power scale. Absolutely. But does that mean like is he approaching god level? Well, what I like, yeah, personally, I don't like it when he's that powerful sure with the exception of all star 
All Star Superman. Yeah, but he, they kind of give a reason in that. Yeah, but this is this is amazing where he becomes super powered, but be, he becomes too super powered. Right. So and, and that becomes him. his demise. Yeah. This is like an interesting. He's got all these powers, but he he's only has a certain amount of time to use sun. them and how to how to do this. I just I'm I, again. I think that's a perfect interpretation of Superman. Mm-hmm. But I'm just saying he's always going to be at the top of the food chain, regardless. Oh, of, unquestionably. So why do some writers feel it necessary to like? Well, I'm going to just push this planet out of orbit. <laughs> <laughs> so that people can be like, no, he well, didn't. I, well, he hasn't done as much of that recently, and I think a lot of that came from this idea of, of like with anything, when you're you have a long running character, we got to raise the stakes. Sure. And so that means Superman becomes more powerful. The threats against him or the planet become even bigger. And I think that was a big reason why John Byrne um, rebooted the character in the '80s and brought him back to basics, because he had just he had gotten ridiculous. He was out of control. He was pushing planets out of the way. He was blowing out stars. He was. Uh, un- there was literally nothing you could do with him that that would that would. He could fly around the Earth and reverse time. Yeah, I mean that was well, in the movie. Sure. Mm-hmm. Although like, I, although I stand by, he's not actually reversing time as much as he's going back in time. Regardless, what? he can change the past. I never and right. you know about my issues with time travel where yeah. that's concerned. So I have issues with that point. Do you have a, do, do you have the same issues with the um, crew of the Enterprise launching a spaceship around a sun? And then going back in time in Star Trek Four. Yes. Well, I love whales, though, so I'll forgive it. <laughs> you know, I, mean, I see what they're doing, the, and the, the that's a discussion for another day and another podcast. Yeah, but, but um, before we jump off this, just mm-hmm. seeing them back in in the past was worth it. They it's didn't a, go back like two days; they went back like years. Yeah, it's a great no. Star it's, Trek Four is a great entertaining. Movie. There's no question about that. Um, Oh, come Superman. On. Not, yeah, Let's talk that's, about that's Superman. A, You're never going to hear me say that again. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Uh, so I guess what I was going to say is to to you guys, what is an ideal Superman? Like what what power levels do you want him at? What's a good story for Superman? What kind of stories do you think bring out the best in the character? This is going to sound a little weird, mm-hmm. but I'm going to go with Injustice. Oh, him know? going just batshit crazy. I, I really like Injustice. Oh, and the have, com- you read, have you read no. Injustice? So based on the recent fighting game um, made by the same guys who make Mortal Kombat, mm-hmm. yeah. um, Injustice Gods Among Us, there is a comic book series that accompanies uh, like the storyline. Which I enjoy way more than the game. Yeah. Really? I believe the, game, the game's kind of fun. There's right, two yeah. trades of it now. There's three. Three? Yeah. Um, basic storyline is... Uh, Superman goes crazy after the Joker basically nukes uh, Metropolis. He, well, he makes him kill Lois Lane. He, right. he messes with Superman's mind to the point where he thinks Lois Lane is – I don't remember if it's a specific villain or if it's – but he thinks – and, and he kills Lois Lane. Right. Mm. Um, so in order to, like, ensure peace, Superman, like, becomes the ultimate dictator. And, I mean, we've seen a little bit of stuff like this on, like, the Earth 2 storylines and yep. stuff where we see, like, the crime syndicate. Mm-hmm. Um, Ultraman. Yeah, exactly. Um, but this is legit Superman who's doing this, and yeah. he gets certain heroes on his side, like Wonder Woman's on his side, yep. and um, naturally, and Batman's the one leading the resistance against Superman. Of course, of course. Yeah. but seeing like the Ubermensch, the Superman, as mm-hmm. it were, um, basically logic all that out to like, yeah, if you're this powerful, why would he bother being like altruistic, mm-hmm. like? Well, That's always been a little bit of a sticking point with me as Superman. is like he has like as much power as some minor gods. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so like he can ensure safety of the earth with an iron fisted rule. Right. And, and this will bring me to something that I think is very key to Superman's story. He won't because of Jonathan and Martha Kent. Sure. They are the ones they who brainwashed him. him. <laughs> They gave him his moral code. Thanks, they made him well. A I mean, if you read person. Red Sun, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Thanks, I mean, Kansas. Yeah, Red doing Sun. the American way. Proud. Um, that's that's a great comic to that talk about really as well. Um, Superman Red Sun. Yeah, I mean, that's it, it, it has a lot of parallels with uh, Injustice. Actually, yeah, for sure. Um, do you like? Can I before, before we? Go I on, like Superman as the bad guy. Yeah. I guess. So do you also like? Uh, was it Irredeemable? The, Irredeemable is a great comic. And Irredeemable yeah. is basically yeah the idea of if if a Superman like character was to embrace his power and and just start imposing uh, he basically just gives up on humanity. Yeah, he's just like fuck you guys. So, it doesn't matter. So yeah. when Lex Luthor wins and gets that whole thing, what what does he do then? Right. Well, this is an interesting question as well with with uh, Lex Luthor. Like, um, what does he actually want? I mean, he wants him dead, but 
but he kind of doesn't at he, the same time. Exactly. Because, yeah. So what? What oh, is he's he actually envious want? of Superman? Is I always that's my read on Lex. One Luthor. of my favorite. One of my absolute favorite um, Superman comics, and maybe even more so than All Star, is uh, Superman for All Seasons. Mm. By yeah, Jeff I really Loeb and Tim that. Sale. Mm-hmm. And there, each chapter of that is narrated by a different Superman character. Mm. Um, that's really. And good. the Lex Luthor chapter is probably my favorite, which is. He goes on these long monologues about how this is a love story about a man in a city and the city that doesn't love him back. <laughs> they love somebody else. Like, and he's like, like every love story, there's a tragedy. They can't see that I'm the best person in, in Metropolis because everybody's mm-hmm. focused on the guy who's flying around. And I just think that perfectly gets to the core of Lex Luthor and his problem with Superman. Where it's just like, no, no, I'm the genius. I'm the one who's great for this city. Don't look at him. Who's he? He's just some. He's you're kind of Lex Luthor a little bit. So, <laughs> so and this just, guy's powerful I'll and dangerous. Take that as a compliment. <laughs> so, and why, why? Who cares about him? And, and and he needs to be stopped. So, in injustice, then is his end goal. Now he can laugh and mock Superman because people understand that he's. What's Lex Luthor up to in injustice? Because he's got to be. I mean. They're kind of friends in Injustice. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. Because he's the only person who survives Metropolis being nuked. Right. Because as a crazy person with all his power, you realize your next threat would be somebody like Lex Luthor. So, squash. But he's a, he's he's on Superman's side in that. Yeah, That's the thing he kind is, of uses Lex Luthor's resources to like enact a lot of his regime, I guess. But yeah. I always felt like he didn't kill him because he had the Boy Scout way about him. Right. You take that away, what's stopping him? I mean... Even just the past atrocities alone that Lex Luthor's committed. Like, right. Well, I'm not even quite sure which, like, stories Injustice is taking as... Injustice is really set in its own universe. Yeah. It's not okay. in, the, in, the, in the continuity of the comics. It's in okay. its own... It's which like, is kind of fun. We assume Superman existed for a time, and so did Lex Luthor. And right. I mean, it's, yeah, the, basic, the basic world is there. Um, but one of the fun things about that is that they get to do crazy stuff like kill off characters. Oh, yeah. I mean, many of the superheroes die in Injustice. Interesting. <laughs> um, it's a it's a great comic. I mean, I really i the, I was unsure of it at first because of the the fighting. You know, it's like oh, it's a fighting game. The fighting game's kind of fun. And yeah, it's fine. But the but the, the comic comics are really amazing. Yeah. There's a really interesting. Do we story. know who wrote those? I feel like we're discrediting oh, this person. Oh, I can't think of his name right now. It's, it's Tom something, and I can't. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it's 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 really good. Um, really interesting stuff. So yeah, so you kind of like Superman as a threat of some sort, or the I, I think he's much more interesting as like a some sort of threat, right? So yeah, I mean that that, that I mean it is it is certainly interesting, and those Injustice comics uh, certainly indicate like, that. Exploring Superman's point of view, I feel like is boring unless he's trying to like impose conflict. Because mm. like yeah, he's a Boy Scout, like right. I'm gonna do what's right. I mean, I think to dumbly, me, the, dumbly, dumbly, why doesn't he have a southern accent? Well, he's from he, Kansas. He's from Kansas. He's from that's not, they, don't, they don't have southern accents in Kansas. That's Midwest. Eh. Maybe I he does. All other... Maybe he does. I mean, he doesn't use maybe any like I don't know. Doesn't say y'all. He doesn't use any Kansas colloquialisms. But fair enough. At the same time, also he went to Metropolis. You know, he's got to yeah, yeah. fit in with the gang, with the crew. Okay, Perry Maybe White. Maybe I'm just racist against people from Kansas. Just as a note, like Tom Superman. Taylor is the name of the man who writes the Injustice Tom comics. Tom Taylor. Yeah, good job, Tom Taylor. <laughs> really, li- I really like those comics. Um, so, Donovan, what what to you is like the ideal kind of Superman story? Then, I mean, I already said I think All Star. Well, yeah, I mean, but that's a, that's an extreme case because I. I also get kind of tired of all his superpowers, with the exception of that one, because they're killing him. So that's right, right, right. Cool. No, I think yeah, I think that's you know, the I think that like a good a good level of my favorite of part super- is where Superman dies. Yes, yes, Gorgon. I could imagine. <laughs> I could imagine that. I like a few pages later when everything's all right. So uh, mm-hmm. minor minor difference. When you know, the Superman's coming back with yeah. Superman. I like. You know, X-ray vision, but not heat vision. You know, there's like a fine line between no, fr- I, no I like freeze heat vision, no freeze I don't, breath. I don't like freeze breath. I've freeze never breath, done. heat vision. It just doesn't make any sense to me. I get, a heat vision's cool. Like he should How be fast. How does freeze breath even work? Like you, he's 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 no, but he's exhaling, and that's coming out of his body, which I'm assuming isn't the, like at a negative. Yeah, temperature. but he can he's change. blowing it so fast, it's freezing in the air, like like a cold wind almost. But friction doesn't work like that, John. Uh, it does. I don't like the power. <laughs> it, also, they they hardly ever deal with the reverse of it, that he can inhale a lot. Like, he can suck out gas of a, in, a, in a room or something. Suck that a golf ball through a garden hose. Yeah, I mean, exactly. He could do anything, yeah. <laughs> I just, I like him when he's fast, strong. Mm-hmm. I also like him when he's smarter. There's a lot of Superman that he kind of becomes... 
Well, I think, I mean, as silly as they are, the Mixoplick stories really show how, how smart he is. Yeah. Because he always has to outsmart Mixoplick. Well, and actually, even Lex Luthor, they're not fighting on a physical level most of the time. I know that there is the robot suit stuff. Gotta love those exosuits. But a lot of the time, it's about outsmarting Lex sure. Luthor. Yeah, well, I agree. With that. And, and I like that, I mean, people always talk about his only weakness is... Kryptonite. Kryptonite. In all of its colors. All of its colors. And they do different things to him. Magic. I believe there's 27 Oh, I don't, I don't know. Jesus if there, Christ. I didn't, I didn't know, know there were that many. <laughs> yeah. I think there's I thought there was like there's, 10 so there's, tops. So there's Kryptonite. There's sure Magic. Same. There's um, not being around our yellow sun long mm-hmm. enough. Um, Lois being Lane. Being our yellow sun too much as we learned. Yeah, in Star. exactly. Lois Lane, Jimmy Olsen are kind of also weaknesses because yeah, anything them. you do that. Yep. I don't know. I, I I feel like I mean, people I think, don't. I think you've actually just stumbled onto what may be his biggest weakness, which is the in in Superman two, um, Ursa is the line about that's how we'll stop him. He cares about these people. Yeah, hmm. I mean, it's a big heart, which is what makes the end of Man of Steel like that fight sequence as spectacular as that fight sequence is. Mm-hmm. How many people in Metropolis are dead? I'm gonna well, go with most of them. Well, I mean, that is a section of the city. It's not the whole city of Metropolis. Sure. But, yes, a lot of people But, yeah, if you destroyed Manhattan of New York City, I'm pretty sure you'd get a good chunk of the population. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. Although, but, I mean, it had to be stopped, you know? Zod and all of his Zodlings. Mm-hmm. I do love those Zodlings. Zodlings. Yeah, the Zodlings are... are I don't know. Strange. I just think his his weaknesses are more important to me than his superpowers. Because right. he's always going to have the weaknesses. So we have to exploit that around the other, which Batman does like a dozen times. Right. I mean, I think he's Batman. Because he's Batman. I think to me, the best Superman stories are the ones that focus on his humanity in that sense. Yeah. And he's, he... Like, I really like Straczynski's run where he's just like, he's walking the earth. Superman grounded. Yeah. Which Mm. is great. Yeah. That's exactly the kind of thing. And he's just helping normal people. Sure. One of my favorite But it shows him as like the paladin as opposed to just like this god that's above everything. One of my favorite Superman moments ever is in that comic where there's a woman standing on the edge of a building and he flies up and he just, he talks her down. Right. He just, he's just a calm, decent man. Like, Yeah. yeah. At the, end, the the fact that he has powers that's not even that's not what makes him a hero necessarily it's just the, this this good heart that he has and also to me when people talk about him being unrelatable he's relatable in a different way than Batman because he is an alien in a lot of ways and especially if you've read Jeff Johns uh, Superman Secret Origin there's this idea and I think Man of Steel gets into this as well this idea of like being the other being the outsider being different in some way or yeah. and i thought that was really good both of his dads in man of steel kind of being mm-hmm. like you can be better you can be different mm-hmm. i don't know i just yeah i mean that's the most can we talk I... for a second about kevin costner's podcast yes holy crap the best jonathan kent ever i think it's really perfect oh he he captured everything that that character mm-hmm. is meant to be walking into the tornado a little mm. i mean i don't know i mean it, it had to be done <laughs> it had to Did be it? done because uh, clearly <laughs> Why I'm else would they put that in there? <laughs> Why else? That I movie mean, was based around science and logic oh, and love. Okay, yeah. Uh, I'm I mean, sure I those think... are like when they set when Zack Snyder sat down and was like, "I'm going to base this movie on three things: yes. science, <laughs> logic, and love." Um, I think all of his movies really. You find three hundred. I yeah. mean, three hundred. <laughs> I mean, one could argue the, the the silliness of the tornado itself, but I don't know that moment when he puts up his hand and tells him to stop. I mean, that's a pretty heartbreaking moment. Though. It is. Yeah. No, I'm not denying that. But I, I mean, I, I think I think the emotional impact of it is, is this can become a whole discussion the... about like my specific problems with Man of Steel. Yeah. Um, um, which we could get into a little bit of. The other thing is yeah. his beard. That's a, that's an issue in that movie. <laughs> how Superman does, how beard? does he shave his beard? Well, now if you watch the animated series, there's an answer to this. What? Yeah, he bounces not seen, his he laser bounces vision the, off of the, off uh, of the mirror, mirror and, he, and like, right back at himself. Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. How does he stop it without burning himself? I don't know. He's Superman. Superman. Yeah. <laughs> what? Is that how he always cuts his hair as well? Or does he just tell his hair to stop Who knows? growing? I don't know. But for some, like that works on his own face. But for some reason, he can just lobotomize Doomsday. Hmm? See, he's got to yeah. stop at a certain level. But yeah, if you're bouncing know. it off a mirror, I'm pretty sure you lost control of that. I was just reading Superman. <laughs> I was just reading Superman comic where know. he did something I've never seen him do, which is he started blinking with the heat vision, so it was rapid firing like a so machine he was gun. Machine gunning it. I've awesome. never seen. I've never Why seen. Why would do that. you want to do that? Oh, because he had to stop like a hundred things coming at him at once. Sure, but just sweep. You gotta read the comic. <laughs> no, it's a great. Wait, what was sure. he stopping? If it wasn't kryptonite or magic, he could just let it hit him. 
No, no, he was trying to stop things from hitting other things. Yeah. Oh, I got not it. not him. I was like, man, it was people thrown out of a circus cannon towards a wall. Yes, I think this. I think this is when <laughs> all the uh, all the nuclear missiles uh, of the world get launched at the same time. Yeah, sure. In the, in like the, they do. Well, this is in um, the, an interesting modern comic that I think does a really good job of writing Superman is Scott Snyder and Jim Lee's Superman Unchained. And I will. I haven't read this comic. I want to because anything Scott Snyder touches is gold as far as and I'm it's concerned. really good. And Jim Lee's art is fantastic. Yeah, I love Jim as Lee. always. Um, it's a, it's a great comic because he also gives Superman an, an inner monologue, which is like Batman. Yeah, which is not super common. And and and, and they to, had it in um, like the. Jeff John's original like Batman Superman yes. run. Yes, yeah, they did. And they yeah, and Greg Pak has it in his current um Batman Superman hmm. run. This brings me actually to an interesting point, which is the Superman Batman relationship. Mm. It's beautiful. Because I mean I think <laughs> it is a beautiful, beautiful as, I relationship. I mean they're the top two characters at DC. Um Presumably in comics. I'm, Can I'm I gonna say that. Uh, yeah, I was gonna go yeah, I'll say that. They are the top they're the most they're the most recognizable they're the two uh, at the very least, they're the two most recognizable characters in comics. I'm just gonna say this. I was in a Safeway today uh-huh. and on top of one of the like wa- like long fridges that are yeah. just like open, there was a Spider Man balloon. Sure, I think Spider Man I, I think Spider Man was full like posed crouch position Spider Man balloon seen, that was I've the size of me. I've and seen I was just like balloon. you're not gonna see that of Batman or Superman, but you're also no, didn't but, just have a Spider-Man movie released with. But the you're last also, two to years. be fair, Spider-Man's a much easier character to pose in something like that. Batman or Superman would be standing. But I'm just saying, in terms of like recognizability, I feel like Spider-Man has kind of I don't gotten think, up there. I think I think he, I think he's amongst them, but I don't think he's in any way eclipsed no. Superman or Batman. Hmm. You and go again, anywhere in the world and you show the Superman shield or the bat symbol, and people instantly know what you're talking about. And I but think same with the Spider-Man mask. Well, I think possibly. five years ago, even more so, it would have been a. A clean sweep by Superman and Batman. Maybe. Um, I, but I, I still think they're the I mean, two. I think, I think it, Spider-Man's the next one. The next okay. most recognizable super. I think those are the three most recognizable. And Captain America now. I think Cap is coming up there and Iron Man, actually, really. Yo, yeah, actually. Yeah. But you're saying the, the two most recognizable characters in comics are Superman and Batman. And their relationship with one another is frequently Superman at his most fascinating. No, definitely, because he's like... Forced to be not necessarily an antagonist, mm-hmm. but he's constantly questioning Batman's they, methods. They have a very tenuous relationship, tumultuous. Let's yeah, say. yeah, tumult- for sure. I mean, it because it gets up. Sometimes they're they're. But they're again, totally seeing him as it. almost the bad guy because I'm always going to be rooting for Batman. Um, but Superman being like, "Come on, Superman, get out of Batman's way. He's doing his job." Well, I don't know if I always feel that. I mean, I'm I'm usually with Batman, but I mean, sometimes you are. Batman does go crazy sometimes. Well, I mean, sometimes you can that's understand calculated, Superman's. Though. That's yeah. John Paul Valley. Well, obviously, there's that Batman. <laughs> and you also see Superman having to step up his game. Because if you're going to be with the Cape Crusader, mm-hmm. like, you have to... And we can talk about, I mean, an interesting... Which is hilarious, because, like, he's Superman. He should be the top of the game. But, but he's no. not. Exactly. But he's not. So, but you just see this. I always, when I read those, I feel like... And he's up the ante Batman has, and so Superman has to rise to that. Or else he's just going to be... No, I, I mean, um, Dark Knight Returns being one of the most interesting yeah. Superman uh, depictions. And I think Superman in that, I mean, he comes off, he's an antagonist without being a villain in that. Right, well, because he's, again, the Boy Scout mm-hmm. working for the government, trying to, like, do what's best for do the people. For the government? Yeah, yeah, yeah he, he definitely a does. conversation with Ronald Reagan. Oh, that's right. <laughs> he goes, he sorry, goes to Corto Maltese right. and, and blows up all the ships and stuff. That's right. Um, but in that, I really like this attitude of, like, he can't comprehend why Batman won't play ball. Right. Like, what's wrong with you? You know what's going to happen. And you you and Oliver Queen are these psychos who are... <laughs> I also really like that. I've always wanted to see the story of what happens when Superman cuts off Green Arrow's arm. <laughs> that was never a comic? They never. I've, I've never seen that? it. If it huh. is, I've never come across it. They just allude to it in that. that he, yeah. I believe he burned it off with heat vision, is what they say. Left or right? <laughs> Uh, Does it say? I don't. I mean, I, if you look at the drawing, I can't remember specifically. But then it leads the to right now and find out. This is not a Green Arrow uh, episode, obviously, but sure. it leads to an awesome moment of Green Arrow firing an arrow with his teeth, which is awesome, which is really cool. Um, but I think that's an, that's an interesting depiction of obviously that's probably the to the extreme like injustice of them actually being enemies, but. Sort of the when they are on the same side, but their tactics are so different. I mean, that, that to me is also an interesting thing, which is Batman's just willing to go further than Superman. Do you think we're going to get a bit of this in the upcoming... Left arm. 
cut off his left arm. Okay. Thank you. That Perfect. makes sense. Um, are we? You think we're going to get this in the upcoming Superman Batman? For sure. I, you know, it's interesting. I was um, I was listening to somebody <laughs> else talking about this that that for the longest time Superman was the um, moral center of the DC universe, but in recent years. Batman has become the moral. The comics are now starting to agree with hmm. Batman. Batman was always the outsider, the dark guy, the guy in the corner who. He's was... the one who scares the entire rest of the Justice League. Right. But now he's kind of the one. That, I mean, look at Injustice. I mean, that's a perfect yeah. example of the kind of thing where he's become the moral center. The comics have become more cynical and harsher and darker. And Superman has sort of fallen by the wayside in that way. The recent Superman comics in the New 52 have not been fantastic, aside from Superman Unchained, which I really enjoyed. Hit and miss. The Morrison stuff was okay. But overall, what he's become he's become the, the, the big blue boy scout. The Well, because how does a character like Superman maintain himself in such a cynical world? And I don't know as if there's an author who's necessarily addressed that as thoroughly as maybe we would like. Right. I think I mean I think that's what I mean, I think Snyder comes close with um Superman Unchained. Uh, I think uh Morrison does a really good job of arguing for his place as an important character. Mm. There's also a really good comic, a uh, Superman comic called, um, what's so funny about truth, justice in the American way hmm. where these other heroes show up and everybody likes them more than Superman because they're <laughs> dark and cool and edgy, but sure. they're psychopaths. Right. Of course. And at the end of the day, Superman has to kick their ass because they're, they're the problem. And everyone's like, gee, we're sorry, Superman. You, you are the guy actually. And I thought that was an important comic too, arguing that like, I mean, in that Captain America way of, of sometimes we need an old-fashioned kind of hero. Sure. And he represents to me, yeah, he, he's an ideal. To, he's something to strive for, which can make him a little less relatable into, at times. Yeah. But, but again, it's depend. I like every comic, and I think this is going to come down to the end of every one of these discussions, mm-hmm. is depends on who's writing it. Exactly. And I, But I think, I think th- what I want to leave us with as we sort of wrap this up is – what do we want Superman to be? What is Superman at its best? And I think to me, that's the thing. He's the ideal to strive for. He's the, yet there's something human in him. Even he's striving to be better. Right. And but, that's part of why he's the ideal because even he's not satisfied with what he is now. But we need to see him struggle too. Yeah. That's because what I'm if saying. he's just perfect all the time, no, that's then what I'm you fall into the, the trope of him only having all the superpowers ever and no weaknesses. Mm-hmm. So you have to figure out like why he's doing it. But I guess maybe that was another one of my big problems with man of steel was not necessarily conveying that he, yes, we see him struggle morally with the whole neck snapper thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, which, but, which this is, this is a, you bring up the neck snapping thing. I'm fine with that. Sure. I, I, I know there are people no, who think Zod that, had uh, to die. Fine. I mean, what, yeah, where are you going to imprison Zod? What are you going to do with them? I mean, he kills the Kryptonian fugitives in Superman too, and no one seems to have a problem with that. No. Yeah. But – First he depowers them. Then he kills them <laughs> in Superman too. If anything, it's even worse. I'm, I'm, I'm not even talking about that though. I'm talking about specifically the point where Kevin Costner says, well – Young Clark Kent says, should I have just let them die? When he and, saves the bus when yeah, he goes in the river. Clark and uh, Jonathan, Kent, Jonathan says, Kent says, maybe you should have. Maybe. He, but, said, he says, maybe. I don't know. But I don't think that, like, Pa Kent should have been, like, his baseline moral compass. He's the one where Superman's getting this, like, Boy Scout attitude from. So see, hearing that line in the movie really set me off and was like, no, Pa Kent should have been, like, no, you did, you did good, son. This is exactly what I would have done. But he's also trying to protect his son from becoming this freak show and protecting I, him from all... No, no, I get all that, but uh, like, I think they could have phrased it in a different way. I think No, but I think the maybe, the maybe is an I don't know. I don't know what the answers are. I'm just... We're all in the... I mean, it's saying these aren't... There's no simple answer to this yeah. question. Mm. That, that, that you're going to have to make these hard decisions. I can't tell you what to do. I can only guide you so far. At the end, of, I mean, he has that whole thing about someday you're going to have to decide yeah. what kind of man you're going to be. And good or bad, that man's going to change the world. Huh? That, that's the thing. He's just yeah. trying to – Should set... have chose bad. <laughs> Would have been much more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think if anything – You still ep- can. This episode <laughs> just can. says that if you got superpowers, you would be a supervillain for sure. Yeah. Oh, me? Yeah. Like, well, personally. <laughs> we have to keep you away from bats of toxic waste is what we just found out. Radioactive spiders? I mean, no way. Okay. Swash those. Let's put it this way. I would save stuff within my own personal interest of doing things. I wouldn't go out of my way to dick people over with superpowers. I still then think again, that would make you a supervillain, though. I would be more of like, what's the villain equivalent of an antihero? Oh. <laughs> like Magneto? Just like, yeah, not 
necessarily no, that would be evil Magneto. for the sake I think of Magneto evil. is is, is, like, is an anti villain, if you will. Sure. You are looking out for you and your own. Right. I'm I'm out for number one. I'm and chaotic course, I'm chaotic neutral, guys. Okay. <laughs> Still terrifying. Yeah, not, Still, not unless great. you get like Yes. Still terrifying. Would much rather live in a world with Superman. Thanks. Thanks for that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Also, I mean, just because thing, I'm a more interesting character we didn't, than Superman. We didn't bring this up, but something that we always have to bring up when talking about Superman is, I mean, what would he look like in, our, in today's society? We don't have people hurling planets at us and, you know, like escaped mega criminals going to blow up the entire earth. Right. I mean, like, he's there on a larger scale of things. And obviously, there's corruption. Mm-hmm. Nobody's arguing with that. But, like, what would, he, if he had Superman's powers, he could deal with all that in, like, an afternoon. Right. Like, Terrorist, round up. I'm saying, he'd get bored. Iron fisted rule. Hmm. Brandon Sanderson is one of my favorite current uh, like fiction authors at the moment. He's writing this great series called The Reclaimers. It's about superheroes pop into existence, and most of them go crazy and take over the world. Because hmm. I feel like if the heroes are running around, if these gods among us, if you will, um, start cropping up, then you're going to have way more people trying to abuse their power than I think comic books would necessarily have us believe. Yeah, I think that's true, yeah. I mean, you're probably right. (laughs) I hate to be the pessimist here, but... (laughs) No, but I mean, it's a good point. (laughs) It's a good point, because it's it's certainly... He's incorruptible somehow, Superman. Yeah. For the, um, pretty much, and I think that's part. part of the appeal of the character. Certainly, yeah. is like he does represent this moral high ground. He's the paladin. He's the one with right. like justice and right are on his side at right. all times. Exactly. I mean that, and that, and that's what I'm saying. When I think, I think at his best, he is the ideal. He's the aspirational. He's character. the paragon. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah, he represents that. I mean, to I mean, hence the I mean the Jesus metaphor and stuff. I mean, sure. it's all that stuff. You know, someday the uh, also Superman doesn't need to walk on water. Right, but I mean, he can. He can. Oh, yeah. he absolutely can. <laughs> um, uh, but there's the uh, in Man of Steel. There's also the thing about someday, or the you know the the people fall behind you and they'll stumble and at times they'll fall, but someday they'll join you in the sun. Like he is the the uh, yeah everything we're striving towards the best of us. Sure. So, I guess at the end of the day, Superman. Is Superman. Is Superman. He, I mean, you, regardless of what, regardless of your own personal enjoyment of the character, you cannot, no one can deny his importance to the genre, to the medium. No, no, it's true. He's, he's the, he is the superhero. Right. So. One quick question I do have. Yeah, sure. So Superman gets his powers from our yellow sun because he's from a place with an orange sun. A red sun. Red Red sun. sun. Yeah. Sure. If he. Is there any other kind of sun that a human can go to and get superpowers? Has that ever been covered? Ooh. Not that I'm aware of. People have been exposed to red sun kind of stuff. I mean, because the people have tried, have, have used red sure. sun technology. And I've never seen it alter anyone in a... No. But like, if humans went to, say, Krypton pop back into existence, yeah. and humans went there, would they be superpowered? Ooh. I don't know. I don't know. Get on it, writers. <laughs> yeah, here's a. St- I mean, how maybe does, somebody's covered this, but that, that does seem like that could easily be a storyline. How does Lois Lane? She gets the superpowers for a day. Yes. How does that happen again? He has he, some concoction. Yeah, he, ma- he makes. Nine. Yeah, he makes a, a thing. He makes a. <laughs> he Superman. There's a MacGuffin. There's a MacGuffin. Okay, I, I I just can't remember. I don't what remember it being anything. I don't. I, I want to say, does she drink it or something? It's I, something like that. It gives her a it's shot. I love that we like we have all of these big aspirational like Superman. He represents the best. Blah blah blah. blah. And then uh, this conversation just devolves into minutia of just like yeah. So how did Lois Lane get? The, does do people get every from? conversation about every character becomes this? This is just how comics are spoken of. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thing, isn't it or it's just like at the end of the it's day what we it's need like, to know you know and then or then it eventually evolves into and let's please not let's let's not go here as we wrap this up into what ifs you know everything's like what if so, superman if crypto yeah mm-hmm. fought had, the hulk you know i mean well please the hulk would tear crypto in half what? i mean i don't want to get into this discussion but a superman versus as hulk as scenario has been something. has been discussed many many times yes hulk gets stronger the angrier he gets yeah but can he ever get as strong as superman that's like asking if God can create a sandwich so big that it, he can't himself. Right. Eat. I don't really think there's an answer. I don't, I don't, you're right. I don't think there, I don't that think came there's... to your mind a little too quickly. That was impressive. I don't think there's an answer. Real. There's a, there's a definitive answer to Superman yeah, versus Hulk. I'll leave that one alone because we'll be here all day. Right. All right. So as we wrap up our conversation about Superman, we turn now to the recommendations segment of the show that closes yes. out all of our episodes. Um, so we go around and talk about either things we're reading now or things we think people should be reading. 
Um, Donovan, you want to kick that off? Sure. I just read um, the first little bit of X Men Dark. It was during the the Dark Reign. It was like uh, Norman Osborn and Mystique kind of heading that up. Very enjoyable. Uh, great, great writing style. Um, I particularly like to use every issue. Each character was assigned a classic um, song title from like a 60s rock band. So like they all had Beatles titles attached to their name and what. I don't know. That that was just for me the aesthetic of that. But great storyline. Um, great Mystique stuff. And I really like – I think Mystique is, is somebody that could be written a lot more. Yeah. That was really awesome. So um, that's really the only thing I read. I've got a couple in my queue. Um, just polished a few off not cool. too long ago. There you go. You're ready? Um, I am currently rereading Alias by Brian Michael Bendis uh, in prep for the Netflix show. That's AKA Jessica Jones. AKA Jessica Jones. Mm. Which reading that comic again, it's got me some real big questions on how that show is going to function. Mm. Simply because, like, the whole Alias premise is that like she was a superhero yes. and she like kicked around with the Avengers every once in a while, but like. Is that going to have been a thing in the Netflix show? I don't know. Mm-hmm. We'll see. It's an interesting question. Yeah. Um, but, and so that's good, obviously. Yeah. Um, or else. Alias like, is a great comic. Yeah, yeah, it is really good. It's been a long time since I've read it. I, I intend to reread um, it as well prior to the show. Interesting that it was originally in the Max line. I find yes. that fascinating. Um, have you read The Pulse as well? I am. That's the next thing on my list, actually. Yeah. Um, because I'm going to kind of try to read it in sequence. Yeah, because that's um, like the sequel series right. to Alien. Um, and then the other thing I'm reading is I just started reading the new, the new uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. comic book. Yeah, um, which is just called S.H.I.E.L.D., right? Yeah, it's just called S.H.I.E.L.D. It takes some of the characters who aren't already established in the comic books from the TV show and puts them in the comic book universe. Mm, right. Um, the it, main focus specifically? Um, well, the main focus is definitely on Coulson. Mm-hmm. Um, Agent May is a new character in the comics, so Great. she's in there. And then Fitz and Simmons are two Fitz of the new Simmons. characters. Um, there's less of a focus in this first issue on Fitzsimmons and May. It's just like, oh, yeah, by the way, they're here. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a huge, like, kind of the secret origin of Phil Coulson. Where like, does it very take cool. place? I mean... It's in, like, modern-day Marvel. But, I mean, where in the continuity of the show of... It, first season, it, second season. No, no, no. It's not, the show. not at all. It's not the show. It's just taking the Nothing. characters from the show and putting them in 616. It's kind of the idea cool. is like in the comics, we don't have a budget, so f- screw it. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's awesome. That's Wade right in there, right, Mark Wade? Yes, and it's it's pretty entertaining. Yeah, very cool. Um, so the first one I have is a comic called Dead Body Road, which is a, an image book. Mm. That's It reminds me of like 70s revenge thrillers about this guy whose wife is murdered and then he starts tracking down the people so it's death wish uh, no it's i mean it's it's, de- it's it's death wish inspired kind of thing but he doesn't I mean, he doesn't become a vigilante like that he specifically he's on the it's a road story and he hooks up with this girl who has similar vengeance towards people and it's just like crazy and violent and nut job you know, you've like, got vengeance against people i've got vengeance let's, against people let's grab shotguns and kill everybody like that's <laughs> as they're driving around in a car need. and and it's yeah it's but it's just like a gritty grindhouse kind of cool style thing it's really cool and then um over at dc one of the best things i think the new 52 gave us was kyle higgins nightwing mm. which the last volume of his run on it just came out I need to get uh, that. volume five setting sun um it's it's just fantastic he's he's he it's interesting he hasn't like redefined the character necessarily to me as much as he's just solidified why nightwing is awesome hmm. he's not doing a ton of new stuff with it per se other than i do like that he's brought the circus back into it hmm. yeah um Haley circus, Haley is, circus is is, really is part of the the comic now and he's moved some of the setting to chicago it's sort of set between chicago and gotham now and so bloodhaven's just who cares? Bloodhaven's not around at this point. Um, I mean, at least that's not, it's not part of this run of it. Sure. Um, he, cause he gets a line on Tony Zuko who's in Chicago. And so he mm. goes there to, to track that down. And then this all leads into, um, the comic that's now called Grayson mm. where they're doing something crazy with Dick Grayson. He's not even really a super, he's like a secret agent spy kind of character, which I haven't read into that. So I can't, I can't speak to that, but Kyle Higgins run on Nightwing uh, is fantastic, and I highly recommend checking it out if you're um, into anything in the Batman world and stuff. Um, and it, it, it runs really uh, like side by side with the Gail Simone Batgirl so stuff, good. and as well as the Batman proper stuff. I mean, like the because it goes family, through Court Death of the, of the Family, Owls. yeah. Court of the Owls and Death of the Family are definitely part of this, um, but specifically with the Batgirl stuff because they're interacting with each other more so than he's interacting with Batman directly. Sure. Um, so also check that. There's out. some hurt feelings where that's concerned. Yeah, especially after Death of the Family. Yeah. That's a strange relationship. 
for sure. Strained is putting it lightly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think that's it for this week's episode of Panel on Panels. Um, I've been John Campbell. I am currently Mike Gorgoni. I'm Donovan Nyler. I'll feed a sane. <laughs> Keep reading comics, everybody. Thanks for listening, and be sure to subscribe to us on iTunes. Also, you can follow us on Twitter, at Panel on Panels, as well as on Facebook, at Panel on Panels, or email us, panelonpanels at gmail.com. Thank you.